So for um, number 14, we want to take the area bounded between these two curves here, and we want to revolve it about the x-axis. So the first thing that we have to do um, is we have to find where they intersect, right? Because that's going to give us the boundaries for integration. And even though it looks apparent from the graph, um, it's always important to check it analytically because sometimes it looks like something, but it's uh, it's not it. So let's check analytically by setting these curves equal to each other. So I have that 4 uh, minus, let's see, y minus 1 squared is equal to minus y plus 3. So I'm going to just expand the one on the left. So that's 4 minus uh, y squared minus 2y plus 1. Uh, is equal to minus y plus 3. So now I'm going to uh, expand this even further. 4 minus y squared, apply that minus. Minus minus gives us plus 2y minus 1. And then I'm going to bring this stuff here um, to the left-hand side. So plus y minus 3 is equal to 0. And now I'm going to collect like terms. So I have that minus um, minus y squared, let's see, plus 2y plus 1, that gives us plus 3y, and then 4 minus 1 minus 3, that gives us 0, so plus 0 is equal to 0, and now I'm just going to factor out uh, a y, so I have y times minus y plus 3 is equal to 0. Therefore, we can see that our answers are when y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 3, because when I put 3 and 0, it's going to make my equation go to 0. Um, and so we can see here that our volume is going to go, it's going to be the sum from 0 all the way out to 3. So from 0 to, oops, um, not what I meant to do, okay. So from 0 all the way out to 3. Now let's think about what happens when we revolve this um, about the y-axis. So when we revolve it, we're going to have uh, a little chunk here between these two curves that gets revolved like so. And so this forms here a cylinder, and that when we, we can think about cutting it open like a, an infinitely thin sheet of paper, right, that gets wrapped about the x-axis. Um, and this is going to give me an area, and it is an area as a function of y, because it does change as we go up the y-axis. Um, for example, if we, if we take it at a higher value of y, that little chunk is going to be like this, right? Oops, I, I did that wrong. I should have done that horizontally. If we go higher and higher, that is going to give me like uh, a cylinder like so, that gets revolved. And when we sum up all of these, we're going to get a volume, right? Um, so our volume is going to be the sum of all these areas as a function of y times dy. And the reason that it is dy is because we're summing it up vertically, right? Um, so all we have to do here is think about how we're going to express that area as a function of y. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do, because this area here is given by base times height, right? So we have to think about the base and the height. Um, so the first thing here is the height, and this height here is going to be the equivalent of this circumference, because when we cut it open, that's going to be like the longest part. And the circumference of any circle is just given by, um, so circumference is given by 2 pi r, right? And so that gives us 2 pi, and the radius is just the value of y. So the further and further that I go on my y-axis, the bigger my radius is going to be. So it's just whatever value of y that I have, right? So this is just 2 pi y. Um, and now let's think about the, the base. Well, the base here, and I'm going to do that in a different color, the base is this section over here. And we can see here that this section is um, the height of the orange curve, right? Because the height uh, of the orange curve is going to give me this whole thing here, minus the height of the blue curve, so minus this little chunk. Um, so once more, if I take this whole chunk here in green, which is the area uh, where it touches the orange curve, and then I subtract from it where it touches the, the blue curve, it's going to give me that difference. So that difference is going to be um, the orange one. So the orange is 4, four minus y minus 1 squared, and then minus, minus y plus 3. And um, let me erase all these drawings over here because they're um, they're kind of cluttering up the the picture.
Okay. Uh, and once more, I'm going to show you guys just so that it's super clear that this little, this little chunk in green is basically, it goes from zero to wherever it touches that orange curve, right? Minus zero to wherever it touches that blue curve. So we can see here that the difference between these two arrows is going to be my green chunk. Um, and so let me just simplify this. This gives us, let's see, four minus uh, y minus one squared, and then minus minus, so plus y minus three minus three. Uh, so that gives us four minus, I'm going to foil this out. So y squared minus two y plus one, and then plus y minus three. So that gives us four minus y squared, and then minus minus plus two y minus one, minus one, and then plus y minus three. So when we collect like terms, that gives us minus y squared uh, plus two y plus y, so plus three y, uh, and then we have four minus one, so three minus three, zero, right? Um, so this here ends up being our uh, our base. Therefore, our area is going to be um, base times height. So minus, uh, actually, let me put the 2 pi y out in front first. So that's 2 pi y times um, minus y squared plus 3y. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to distribute this y so that we can integrate it easier. So that's minus y cubed plus 3y squared. All right, now that I have um, an expression for my area, right, this is the area of each of these um, rectangles, so each of these cylinders as I sum them up. Um, so now my volume is basically going to be the integral from 0 to 3 of a y dy. So 2 pi goes outside because it's a constant um, integral of minus y cubed plus 3y squared and all of this times dy. So when I integrate it, this is going to give me 2 pi times minus y to the power of 4 over 4 plus 3y cubed over 3 and all of this evaluated from 0 to 3. So when we plug in our boundaries, we get, let's see, 2 pi times minus 81 over 4 plus these threes cancel out, so that's plus 27. And then the zero is going to disappear, so I don't need to evaluate that. And so the answer gives me, let's see, if I put this in my calculator, um, that gives me 27 pi over 2. And that is the volume that I get when I take um, this area and I revolve it about the x-axis by summing up the area of each uh, cylinder.